With Prodigy, we were honestly surprised. And uh, we were, I, I would use a stronger word and say, we were almost amazed at, at what we uncovered in terms of respiratory depression episodes. Previous literature um, has reported um, events to the rate of about 15 to 20%, or I would say hypoxemic events to the rate of about 15 to 20%, depending on thresholds and durations of time. Um, the strength of Prodigy, again, was that we did not rely only on hypoxemia. We looked at like, you know, capnography and oximetry together. Uh, a direct extension of that means that we probably have different numbers in terms of the incidence of respiratory depression that we were able to uncover with Prodigy. That number is higher than that reported in literature, and it is really novel and interesting data because we believe in the strength and accuracy of the data. Uh, we believe that there is minimum artifact in that data. So to put, it, put all of it together, I think the difference between the past and what Prodigy has done is the use of multi-parameter monitoring, never been done before, and done in a very novel fashion, in a very specific patient subset uh, across three different continents. So that, that's probably one big reason why our results are different from what's been seen in literature before. Many previous studies have used markers for respiratory depression based on adverse outcomes, such as naloxone administration, emergent reintubations, or death. When you don't continually monitor vital signs, there are many patients who are having episodes of prolonged respiratory depressive episodes that go undetected. So the advantage of the Prodigy trial is that we were actually continually monitoring these patients postoperatively, so we knew when they were having episodes of respiratory depression. And this is why the, the incidence is much higher in this study than in previous studies that use these other markers.